Welcome back to video 11 of the AR-15 high rail gas block machining video series. In this episode we are going to do the 3D machining of that lightning window or lightning pocket right there and uh, this is what the original tool paths st sort of look like although I went back and changed it and added those blue um, arc areas and roundovers uh, you know I added tool path rounding so it didn't take such uh, dramatic cuts in the corners and you'll see why in a minute um, so this is the 3d toolpath right here that's going to round over uh, basically just round over all those sharp edges after I pocket it out This is a 4% step over with a 3 16th inch ball mill. So I I put I went back and I put this um, slot this kind of ramping slot in there to relieve some material so it, it's uh, not so hard on that end mill when it hits in these uh, corners and you'll see why in a minute but this is kind of the order I'm going to do the ramping slot and then that uh, pocketing there and then come back and just kind of clean it all up and then go on to the 3d machining right here this is a parallel finishing operation which which made a, a very nice tool path for this area. I tried a few of them but this one kind of made the most sense. The model looks pretty ragged but that's just the computer model. That's just the rendering of it. It's not that bad in person in reality. <clears throat> So then I go through and I uh, do the uh, gas block uh, spotting and drilling for the for the gas tube roll pin, which which secures the gas tube. So here we go. This is a standard uh, four flute ball mill. Uh, it starts out by doing a ten degree ramp, which uh, is kind of chattery. So I'm gonna have to go back and figure that out and fix it and then it just profiles outwards in uh, I think there's a two percent this one's a two percent step over this is the first code I did and I had to go back and change it the two percent step over left a floor that was so finely finished it looked like I'd gone over it with a flat bottom end wall so I thought, well, I could probably afford to bump it up. So I bumped it up to four later in the code, but uh, but this is this is at the two percent. And you can hear it's getting chirpy in those right angle corners and especially in the top there where it's actually it's actually uh, engaging a full width for a fraction of a second. You can almost see the end mill flex and <laughs> and then break. <clears throat> it left an amazing finish except for that area where it broke, but uh at least that tells me that uh, I, I can't do those right angle cuts. Um, Alright, so here's the... I'm actually spotting this hole with the 45 degree chamfer mill. Just because I think the big spot drill I have wouldn't leave as precise of a hole. Actually, I, I think it was because it wouldn't fit in there. The flutes of it ended up hitting the sides of that concave part. So here we are with a little number 47 carp excuse me, carbide drill just going straight through the piece there
So then uh, I ordered uh, some stub length end mills and I got them in and I came back to do this operation and I'm here I'm doing that slot that will hopefully relieve some of the end mill when it's going around and doing the fast uh, profiling there. This slot is still chattery and it leaves a horrible surface finish on the vertical wall there so I'm going to have to figure out what's going on there and redo that. But then uh, I go back and I do the same cut. All these ramps are now 3 degrees instead of 10. I do essentially the same cut but with the corner rounding and more arcs and stuff in there to make it easier on the tool. And I just sped it up because it's not cutting anything until the very end here. Just relieving material uh, that the other ML broke or missed by breaking. <clears throat> so then I go in and just do a profile of the inside of that pocket just to clean everything up. And I'll redo this ramp. This ramp is too long. It's a three degree ramp at five inches a minute. And I go around and um, do the whole profiling thing at five inches a minute. This left an amazing finish. So now we go over to the 3D machining just to kind of break all the edges and round everything over to make it more organic. And this turned out pretty well. Um, this whole operation took right at about five minutes, which I was surprised by. I thought it would have taken a lot longer. Um, This is at a four degree or four percent step over, <clears throat> which looks fine, but I think I'm going to go back to a two percent step over and maybe even run it faster. I'm not sure. So it'll probably ultimately end up, end up being just a little bit more than five minutes, but we'll see. There's some areas here that are kind of chattery. Not really sure why. Again, I had to pull that end mill out further out further than I wanted to, so the uh, tool holder would clear the fixture because it gets dangerously close right there. So overall that turned out really well. <clears throat> the main issue I see here is one, eliminating the remaining chatter. Uh, two, I need to raise that tool path up off the model a little bit because it, it simply cut a little bit too deep. It's cutting true to the model, but I think this gas block is a little bit oversized from deflection. So what I need to do is just compensate by raising the tool path 
up a few more thousands. Right now it's raised uh, two thousands off the model. I should probably go up to five thousands or six thousands or something. You can see how it cut ever so slightly too deep. All, all in all, the finish is great. I'm going to bump up the uh, step over, or bump it down to 2% again, and uh, figure out some of those shattering things. So I had to go through and, after examining the model and some of the cuts, I had to go through and shorten these socket head cap screws down because they were too tall. And I'll show you why later, but I'm just uh, manually jogging around and buzzing the top off with that 3 8 inch rougher. And some things, you know, the code makes things easier and faster, and sometimes it's just a hindrance. So all I wanted to do was break these uh, edges, so I'm just chucking the thing in a drill and just running it on a, a vise, or sorry, a file that's in a vise. And then I take a round file and just kind of break the edge on the inside hex so the uh, Allen wrenches will fit in there okay. And this worked great and just took a minute. So moving on, we're going to the, the fixture one and we're... Uh, redoing the bottom operations here, specifically pertaining to the sling swivel socket. This is a 400 thousandths full width slot, 400 thousandths deep full width slot, and it sounds amazing with that thing mill. I mean, it just gets dead quiet. So then I go back and I kind of machine the top off, which is going to be the surface of the sling swivel socket, and I do a 5 thousandths finish pass. And this all turns out great. Um, and for some reason, it does two finish passes. I had to go back and fix that in the code. It really, only needs one. So I just come down with a spot drill, and I'm now drilling the hole for the gas port which bleeds gas off of the barrel into the gas block and into the gas tube. So I'm using a number 28 carbide drill <coughs> and I'm doing a full retract peck here but I think I might change that to a brake chip because the majority of this cut is just cutting air. Um, because it's traversing the inside of that bore, which is just empty space. So I think just a, a brake chip ought to be fine. And that cut very nicely. So here I'm coming back with the 316 inch end mill and I'm cutting this this roughing operation in two passes, two Z level passes, um, to try to eliminate that chatter when it does a full slot around the back side of the part right here. It's still chattering, so I might go back to just if it's gonna chatter, I might go back to just cutting it in one pass. If it's going to chatter anyway, and then just drop the RPM down. But the reason I did it in two passes was because uh, G Wizard was just telling me I, I couldn't do it without getting more than one thousandth of deflection. Now, curiously, on this pass, which is the exact same cut, it doesn't chatter. I'm not sure what that's about. And then I just do a quick once around <coughs> for a finish pass right here. And then I move on to uh, milling that 
bore out for the sling swivel socket right here. And I debated with plunge milling it with the 3 8 inch end mill, but uh, Carl at Lakes World Carbide suggested I just do a helical interpolation. So that's what I'm doing here. And it's a 3 degree ramp <coughs> going down 0.4 inches. And it sounds okay. Um, but after this was done, the uh, flute tips were kind of chipped. They were already a little bit chipped from the last video when it plunged down into uh, the part from that Mach 3 screw up. But now they're much worse. But even so, it hadn't really affected the cut that much. So I'm still using this end mill. But I ordered uh, from from Carl. I ordered uh, a round, like a corner radius end mill, to see if that helps, which I'm sure it will. So this was enigmatic. It went through, and I forgot to change the RPM on this. So it was at 1300 for whatever reason, and it did this finish pass at 1300 RPM. And it not only sounded great, but the uh, the finish it left was unbelievable. So nothing that G Wizard came up with gave me an RPM that was that low even for fine finishing so I'm not sure why that it, why that left such a, a beautiful finish but I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit further uh, this is just that 47 thousandths uh, round over again I widened the berth of that tool path uh, another couple of thousands so it wouldn't leave a ledge and um, it's it was much much better you couldn't see the ledge with your eye but you can kind of feel it with your fingernail so I'm going to widen it just a little bit more it should be perfect then I have uh, <coughs> this high speed steel 8 flute woodruff cutter that comes in and it cuts the rotation limiter for the sling swivel socket this retains the socket uh, by use of those ball bearings but it's cut in such a geometry that it won't allow it to rotate because you don't want it just rotating and binding up your sling and twisting it all around. So this cut beautifully even with the very low RPM. And you, you'll have to just see it to believe it but the, the bore in there is unbelievable from that super slow RPM with the 3 16th inch end mill. It looks like it's precision ground or something. There's why I had to shorten those socket head cap screws to make clearance for the drill drilling out the gas port. Otherwise they would have drilled right through the bolt. <clears throat> so there's the finish. It's an amazing finish on the inside. The outside it has a couple little bumps you can sort of see on the left and right side of the thing from the woodruff cutter. And that's because that material there is too thin and needs to be thickened a little bit or the uh, rotation limiter drawn in. It's really kind of oversized. But you can see the rotation limiter works fine. It retains that socket very solidly. Very happy with that except for the little minor things. There's a little ledge on the roundover on the front and back but I designed that in there because those will be uh, finished later from the side milling operations, but the left and right side are almost perfect. Thanks for watching.